Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with Loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simiou, and on this edition, we'll be looking ahead to Arsenal's UEFA Europa League semi-final first leg versus Valencia coming up this Thursday. And I'm joined by a very special guest. Joining me on the line is La Liga expert and football journalist Jonas Yeva. Jonas, welcome to the show, my friend. First of all, how are you? Thank you so much for having me on. I'm uh, I'm all right, a little bit under the weather, but uh, football always gets me through those bad times. <laughs> how Absolutely. about yourself? Yeah, I'm not too bad, Jonas. Not too bad at all. Uh, keeping busy. You know how it is. You know how it is. Yep. Uh, Jonas, the reason we got you on the podcast this week, of course, is... <clears throat> for your superior La Liga knowledge. And, and, you know, you are a La Liga expert. We have we spoke, uh, I think it was a good couple of years ago now, the last time. And, uh, you know, I keep up with you on, on social media and you do some fantastic work. And if I'm not Thank mistaken, you. was you at the Mestalla this season? Yes, I've been there uh, twice this season, actually. I was there for Valencia facing Villarreal. Uh, and I was there when Norway faced Spain. So it's actually been two two trips there this season. My first two trips, actually. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. Jonas, we're looking for the download on Valencia. Of course, there are semi-final opponents. Um, I think I'd be, what's the word? Mm, I, I think I'm pretty confident in saying that most Arsenal fans don't know a great deal about this current Valencia side. <laughs> um, give us the download. How's their season been so far? Well, uh, Valencia and Arsenal obviously have a great history amongst themselves. I mean, they faced a couple of times in, in the Champions League. And, and as a Norwegian, of course, I'm very proud to say that I'm also a big John Carew fan, who obviously <laughs> put uh, Arsenal to the sword a couple of times in, in Europe. But um, there's no joke, John Carew at, at Valencia at this point. And, and Valencia have been very much a roller coaster this season. They started off uh pretty bad actually i mean they were one of those teams that at least i thought would would perhaps take another step this season but they've had uh a ton of draws this season a ton of very disappointing results and and they've struggled in front of goal i mean they, they managed to create so many chances and so many chances that are that seem you know 100 percent set on set on goal but but they managed to miss uh in the final seconds at times almost unbelievably so um so it's it's a valencia which you never really quite know uh i mean you, you never quite know which which valencia side is going to turn up i mean I, I used the expression that that valencia is sort of if you're in a 50 zone valencia will either be in 49 just pushing the limit almost above the zone or they won't even have been able to get out of the parking spot because <laughs> b because you never really know what sort of side they're going to get and, and apparently that's something that marcelino their manager also has been uh been aware of because he's actually said and gone on record, and this is not me making this up. He said that Valencia play better at night, uh, okay. and he said that whenever whenever they face, whenever they play night games, the ball rolls a little bit quicker, the passes are a bit crisper, and they just seem a bit more energized when they play in the evening. So um, that is bad news for for Arsenal because I believe both of the games are at at 8 p.m. English time, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, it doesn't bode well for us. That's not what we wanted to hear, Jonas. <laughs> um, in terms of, of the coaches, Marcelino at the moment, and yep. you know Valencia are, are famed for going through lots and lots of coaches. Famously, <laughs> Gary Neville tried his luck over there uh, from yep. here in the UK. Didn't go very well. Um, to be honest, I thought that was a little bit of a suicide mission on his part, taking a job <laughs> in a country where he's not familiar, where he's not doesn't know the language. And it was a very tough first job because the expectations at Valencia are always so high, are they not? Definitely. I mean, we have to remember that Valencia in the in the late nineties and early two thousands were was challenging for for you know winning the Champions League. They played two finals, once in in uh, two thousand and one once in two thousand and one, and they were winning La Liga ahead of both both Barcelona and Real Madrid. And this was Barcelona sides that that featured the likes of Rivaldo and Cruyffert and. Reisiger and all those fantastic players on the Real Madrid side, they were building their Galacticos teams. So so this was a Valencia side that, that was amongst Europe's absolute best sides. And and then, you know, there, there were, as you mentioned, there was bad management, both in terms of the playing or, or the sporting side of it, and also uh, administrative, where they had, you know, different directors and different presidents that seemingly did not exactly know what they were doing. And, and it's been um, a downward spiral for the better part of 10 years. And 
And now they've been bought up by Peter Lim, who obviously also has connections to Gary Neville and, and the class of 92 and, and is said to be an investor in, in that, um, I believe it's Salford City Salford project City, that they have. Right. So so uh, he he at least gives them the, the financial balance and, and the backing that they need. And in the past couple of years, you've seen them, them doing bigger things in the transfer market, getting the likes of Gonzalo Guedes and... And uh, Ezekiel Garay, for example, are two big, big name players that they managed to get in. And, and they keep growing, at least in terms of the players they, they get in. But uh, the fact of the matter is that Valencia now is looked upon as a step below the likes of Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid and Barcelona. And, and I don't think that's a position that uh, the Valencian fans are too happy about. Yeah, absolutely. As, I, as we said, the expectations there are always so high. And I guess mm. that ultimately stems from the supporters, doesn't it? In terms of their tactical approach, what, what's, how do you think Marcelino will, will approach this game, particularly the first leg at the Emirates Stadium, where they are the away team? But, you know, <laughs> we've seen in European competition in particular, that well, in European competition, that away goals are so important. So yeah. do you think Marcelino will come to the Emirates and look to, to defend and nick a goal? Or will it be more of a, a brave approach, in your opinion? Oh, he'll be brave. Uh, Marcelino's playing style is all about energy, all about running more than your opponent, pressing high up the pitch. He, he plays a, a very narrow 4-4-2. At times, he has uh, central midfielders playing in, in, in uh, winger roles almost and moving inwards, trying to create uh, an overload centrally in midfield. Uh, and also, he has his wing or his, his backs usually, his wide backs usually, uh, overlap all the time. I mean, they have they have the likes of Gaia, and, and I assume it, it'll probably be uh, Daniel Vass playing on the other side. So, I mean, they will have two dynamic wide backs coming up as well. So, so um, no, he'll be brave, and he'll, he'll press, and he'll try to get get the first goal. And we have seen at times that he, he'd like to stay a little bit more uh, reserved once he gets that first goal and perhaps try to counter in the, the second and the third and the fourth, if, if possible. Uh, but this season, obviously, as I said, they haven't been as effective in front of goal. So uh, I'd be very surprised if Valencia decide to sit back uh, and you know stay in a low block and try to defend as much as possible. But it is it, it is possible because they will respect that Arsenal have a lot of pace in the likes of uh, Aubameyang. So um, I, I I think that he'll he'll try and at least for the first 15, 25, 30 minutes to press and and get that first goal. And if not, perhaps fall back a little bit and hope that he could catch uh, Arsenal in the counterattack. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he and and there's another dimension to this game as well when you're looking ahead to it. Of course, our manager Unai Emery spent mm-hmm. the best part of four years at Valencia. Is there an interest in how he's getting on in the Premier League from Spain? Would you say there is? And, and uh, even though I, I can't say I've seen this too much, I, I I've been told by by I have a lot of. Actually, I have a lot of friends that support Valencia because of John Carew, uh, and and they keep mentioning to me that that um, it is it is a it is a, a, a sense of pride in, in facing Unai Emery because he was never really able to take Valencia back into uh, that that spot that they wanted, even though he was performing pretty pretty well actually in taking them into the Champions League. But he was boring, he was bland, his, his substitutions were uninspired. He had a defensive style once they were ahead and. You know, they lose their lead, as you've seen in PSG, as you've seen at times with Arsenal as well, that he sort of falls into that same kind of evil spiral that that, uh, that seems almost poisonous at times and, and, and a bit negative. So there are a lot of Valencia fans that are against Unai Emery and, and getting one over on him would, would be uh, the perfect revenge, they think. Even though I, I, I am not really subscribing to that, that train of thought, I think um, Emery is shown uh, shown in Spain that, that he's a he's a top class manager he did it did his did all he could seemingly for for Valencia but another th- torn in the side for for uh, for Valencia supporters is that he had so much success with Sevilla who, who was yes. obviously a, a a rival of, of Valencia so seeing him succeeding there and not having that level of success at, at Valencia obviously bites at a lot of supporters of course, of course, and understandably so. In terms of mm-hmm. Valencia's danger men, who who should we be looking out for? Who should we be concerned about? Gonzalo Guedes is, is uh, finally, uh, at least for Valencia's sake, hitting his stride this season. He was fantastic last season. Uh, and he has struggled this season a lot with injuries and being very inconsistent. But past month or so, he's looked absolutely fantastic and sublime and and I and I like to call him the gunslinger of La Liga because he 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 just shoots 
uh, you know, uh, unwarranted. I mean, he, he, he's he, if you give him an inch from about 25, 20 yards out, he'll he'll take the shot and he usually makes the goalkeepers uh, work as well. And he's, I mean, he's so elusive and so much fun to watch. And I and I've gone on record and said, with the exception of Lionel Messi. Uh, I think Gonzalo Guedes is the most fun player to watch in, in La Liga. Uh, however, his, his inconsistency is what keeps him away from being ranked as perhaps one of the absolute best players in the league. Um, it was also rumored to, to I, think, I think Arsenal were actually interested in buying him before Valencia used their option uh, in, in the loan that they had with PSG last season. So, so he's definitely one to look out for. Uh, I also think that uh, Dani Parejo in, in midfield is very underrated and perhaps one of the most underrated midfielders uh, in Europe. He, he also suffers from a bit of inconsistency, but he's shown this season that he's uh, one of the absolute best playmakers when he's on form. And he's been in the Spanish national team this, se- uh, this season as well. So uh, I'd say those two. And also I'd watch out for Rodrigo Moreno because... As a striker, he 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 pops up everywhere. He's he's fast. He's technical. He likes to drift out on the wing and and at times you know create overloads in the wide areas as well. So he's he's a guy that that uh, that Arsenal need to look out for. And also and also just to point that out, I mean I think the central line of Valencia is uh, is so so strong, but but they'll feel that they they that they're missing Kondogbia, um, who is sort of the. The, the, if, you, if you can compare it to, to someone, I'd say he's, he's a little bit comparable to what Patrick Vieira was for Arsenal back in the day. He's, he's obviously not as complete because who is as complete as Patrick Vieira? <laughs> but but he's somewhat has somewhat a similar type of role. Okay, interesting stuff. One final player that I do want to ask you about is, and, and yeah. we know that there's two former Arsenal players there at the moment, Francis Coquelin and Gabriel. How has Gabriel Paulista got on at Valencia? Because... Here at Arsenal, you know, we're crying out for decent centre-backs and not even world-class ones, just ones better than the likes of Shkodran Mustafi, who we bought from Valencia and has turned out to be an absolute disaster. How has Gabriel gotten on since he's, he's moved to Spain? You don't read much of him in the papers or obviously as a centre-back, he doesn't really make the headlines. Well, you'd assume there's a reason for that, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> he's, 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 he's not been he's not been uh, the best central central defender. Let me put it like that. I mean, if if Valencia had switched back for, I mean, there's a lot of Valencia fans that really really despise Mustafi as well. But if you switch those two around, I don't think too many would have you know too much to say about it because Gabriel has he has matches where he's been superb, but he needs Garay to be next to him. If Garay is there to lead him around and sort of be uh, the one that sweeps up around him. Gabriel could can have fantastic matches, but uh, but no, the, <laughs> he's way too inconsistent. And I think that that's one of those areas that, that Valencia will look to strengthen. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if they, they decide to go with uh, Garay and uh, Mukhtar Diakabi for, for the first leg, uh, even though I'm not too sold on Diakabi either, to be quite honest. But uh, uh, I think he's perhaps the lesser of two evils, especially given that um, got a, or um, Gabriel, sorry, ha- has a tendency to, as you know, as an Al- Arsenal fan, that when the emotions get a bit too too hot, he usually gets a bit too hot headed as well and does something that he should not be doing. Uh, and I'm referencing especially that that game against Chelsea where yes. <laughs> Diego Costa got under his skin and he was sent off pretty early. Yeah, absolutely. How do you see the first leg going, uh, Jonas? If you had, I, I know it's very difficult to predict these things. So many yeah. variables in football and. You know, I, most of the time I don't even bother trying to predict the game. But in terms of, you know, you, you know quite a bit about Unai Emery. You know more than I do anyway about Marcelino. How do you see the two styles colliding? I should have probably checked the uh, the head-to-head between Marcelino and Emery before I took this call, shouldn't I? But I'm not quite sure how, how that one stands. But I think in terms of styles, uh, I think that they are very equal in that Unai Emery is very uh, tactical and is very meticulous in how he sets up usually. And he he usually has one or two schemes uh, in order to solely uh, fend against his opponent. And then he has one or two very obvious schemes in order to, to, um, to, uh, I suppose, decapitate his opponent, if you can put it like that. I mean, he's very... Ulay Emery is extremely meticulous, and I, and I don't think you've seen as much of it yet in, in Arsenal. 
Uh, I think you, you might see even more of it next season. Um, and Marcelino is is very simple in terms of playing 4-4-2, trying to create an overload either, either centrally or at wide. Um, so it, it all depends on on on, uh, on who gets the first goal and who gets that first big break. And I think that given the qualities of the two sides, I'd, I'd be surprised if that team is not Arsenal um, because they have they have so much quality both primarily offensively, but I think Arsenal as well in terms of their midfield and being able to to fend off that first line of pressure are, are, are actually quite underrated. And I think that uh, if Torreira plays, for example, I, I think that, that they will might even have the upper hand in terms of the midfield as well. So, um, and, and I mean, if, if, if you could isolate Garay, who isn't the fastest with the likes of, I mean, Lacazette or Aubameyang, you know, there's only one winner in that. And I, and I think that how how Arsenal approached the first leg against Napoli is probably what they should do against uh, Valencia as well, at least some of the same uh, aspects that they, that they had in that game. I was very, very, very impressed by Ars- Arsenal in that game. And I think that, um, I think that, that also impressed uh, Marcelino. So, so it'll be interesting to see how he, uh, how he decides to set up or if he becomes a, a bit more defensive that, than, uh, than usually because he saw that game as well. Absolutely. And, and I hope you're right. I hope Arsenal do have the upper hand. Uh, Jonas, I, I've just looked up the head-to-head record between the two. It's 13 yeah. matches in all competitions. Unai Emery has won seven of those. Yeah. Marcelino has won five and there's been one draw. So it's not a, a record that's <laughs> steeply stacked in one or the other's favour, really. It's only, you know, Emery's got two more victories than Marcelino. Mm-hmm. So it, it's pretty even. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed Arsenal do the business Jonas, thank you so much for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. And maybe we can speak to you again in the near future and maybe get your thoughts after the tie, perhaps, sure. uh, and see uh, how you think it went. Uh, do you want to let our listeners know how they can follow your fantastic work and about the podcast and various other projects that you're working on? Yeah, uh, well, if you want to follow me on, on Twitter, it's uh, it's at Che Guevara. That's C-H-E-G-I-A-E-V-A-R-A. Uh, and if you're a Norwegian listener, and I hope that a lot of Norwegians listen to this, uh, you can follow my Norwegian La Liga podcast at La Liga Loca Pod, which uh, is also on Twitter and Facebook. We're not on Instagram, though, but Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> Lovely. Great stuff. And we'll leave the links in the description for uh, people to click on them as well and check your work out. Jonas, thank awesome. you very much and uh, have a great evening. Thank you for having me on.